This is the 5 minute guide to the Renown class battle cruisers of the British Royal Navy. The Renown class were not a planned design. Originally, the Revenge class of battleships was supposed to have been 8 vessels. Five had been started by 1914, and the contracts for the last three, Renown, Repulse and Resolution, were issued to start in that year to a modified design alongside a sixth vessel of the Queen Elizabeth class. But with the outbreak of the First World War, these ships were cancelled, since nobody expected the war to last long enough for them to be completed. But Admiral Lord Fisher wanted some new battle cruisers and pressured the Admiralty to let him use the items already ordered to quickly complete a pair. This was resisted until the Battle of the Falklands and the Battle of Heligoland Bight showed that the battle cruiser was highly effective in the role it was originally designed for, that of hunting enemy cruisers and other light units. Therefore, a rapid series of designs were prepared, and the contracts issued for a pair of new battle cruisers to begin construction in 1915. The names of the first two cancelled ships were used, and so that class would consist of Renown and Repulse. These ships were considerably longer than the Revenge class, at nearly 800 feet compared to 624, although width and draught were similar. Using oil fuel instead of coal, they would be capable of 32 knots and would be armed with six 15-inch guns in three twin turrets, two super-firing at the front and one at the rear. This was one twin turret less than the battleships, but an improvement on the first plans, which only called for two turrets and four guns. Due to the idea that they would be primarily engaging cruisers and destroyers, the secondary battery consisted of 17 4-inch guns instead of the larger 6-inch weapons on battleships. These were arranged in five triple mounts and two singles, although the triple mount proved somewhat clumsy and slow. A pair of single 3-inch anti-aircraft guns and a pair of torpedo tubes would complete the secondary armament. Armour was also quite thin, the main belt being only 6 inches thick, with a maximum of 1.5 inches of deck armour, again due to the idea that they would be fighting cruisers and destroyers, where this level of protection would be just about enough. However, both ships were launched soon after the Battle of Jutland, and almost immediately were put back into dock for radical improvements to their armour, with a 50% thicker armour belt and increased levels of deck protection. By the time they were fully engaged in operational duties, the deck was between 2.5 and 3 inches thick, and the belt armour was 9 inches thick. This was still not as good as some German battlecruisers, or the Admiral-class battlecruisers under construction, but it was a significant improvement. However, even at this point, differences in the ships were beginning to emerge, with the refits conducted in slightly different manners, the Renown's belt, for instance, being mounted higher compared to the Repulse after the fitting on Repulse had showed the increased displacement led to the belt sitting a bit too low in the water for comfort. In the First World War, the Repulse took part in the Second Battle of Heligoland Bight and hit the SMS Konigsberg with a main battery shell. Later in 1917, she became the first capital ship fitted with platforms for launching aircraft. The Renown was part of a fleet sent to intercept a German force that had attacked a convoy, but did not find their targets. After uneventful patrols in the North Sea, both vessels were present for the surrender of the German High Seas Fleet at the end of the war. After the First World War, the Repulse was fitted with better torpedo protection, new fire control devices, and eight torpedo tubes in twin mounts on the upper deck. The Renown had some of her secondary guns removed to be used as a royal yacht for touring the Empire, before receiving a similar refit to her sister, although with a strip of extra armour below the raised belt to deal with diving shells. Whilst the Repulse's torpedo defence systems were based on those used in the Revenge class refits, the Renown's was based on the system developed for the Queen Elizabeth class. Additionally, the rear 4-inch mount, the single 4-inch guns and the 3-inch guns were replaced by four new 4-inch anti-aircraft guns, a move that was repeated on Repulse after it arrived back from a world tour alongside the Hood. In the 1930s, both ships received extensive refits. The Renown went first and received two Octubal 40mm mounts and new fire control systems, alongside a hangar and the launch rail for a float plane. Repulse also received a float plane system in place of the midship's triple 4-inch mount, a pair of twin 4-inch dual-purpose mounts, and two quadruple 50 caliber machine gun mounts in addition to the same 40mm armament as her sister. As the decade progressed, the ships began to differ even more. 
The Renown was reconstructed in 1936 along the lines of the War Spite. New machinery and a new superstructure were installed, and the main guns had their elevation increased to 30 degrees, and all secondary weapons larger than 40mm guns were removed and replaced with a uniform armament of 20 dual-purpose 4.5-inch guns in dual turrets and dual mounts. The smaller anti-aircraft weapons were upgraded to a total of three octuple 40mm mounts and four quadruple 50 caliber machine gun mounts. Her underwater torpedo tubes were removed, and eight above-water torpedo tubes in twin mounts were added, similar to those Repulse had received years earlier. Finally, her deck armour was further improved to a total of five inches thick at its thickest point. Repulse was due to receive a similar refit, but World War II began before this could be done. So apart from some changes to newer four-inch guns and a pair of additional quad machine guns, she was significantly less modern than the Renown. During the Second World War, the Repulse was escorting convoys and chasing after German capital ships without success. In 1941, she was given radar and eight 20mm guns before being transferred to the Far East alongside the Prince of Wales. As we covered in the video on the Prince of Wales, both ships were then attacked by Japanese aircraft, and despite a magnificent display of ship handling by her captain, the Repulse was eventually caught between two waves of bombers, and after avoiding dozens of bombs and 19 different torpedoes, she was hit by four or five torpedoes in rapid succession, and sank with a loss of 508 of her crew. Although the two ships were unsupported and probably doomed anyway, it's interesting to consider what would have happened if the Renown, with a much more comprehensive anti-aircraft battery, had been present instead. Renown would be fortunate enough to have a more active career, although arriving too late to help with the German cruiser Admiral Graf Spee, she did find and sink the blockade runner Watusi at the end of 1939. She then supported operations off Norway and encountered the battleships Scharnhorst and Neisenhau on the 9th of April in the middle of a storm. She received two hits from their 11-inch guns, but suffered minimal damage. In return, she hit the Neisenhau with a 15-inch shell and a pair of 4.5-inch shells, and disabled the fire control systems and the frontmost turret. As a result, the German ships disengaged. An inconclusive series of operations in the Mediterranean was interrupted by the hunt for the Bismarck, and again, although not present for the destruction of a German capital ship, the Renown did manage to find and deal with a supply ship intended for the German battleship. After another convoy escort mission, she received a large variety of radars to deal with various threats, and two quadruple 40mm mounts atop of her second turret. She then spent the rest of 1942 escorting Arctic convoys and covering the landings of Operation Torch. In 1943 and 1944, she would receive additional refits, gaining another quadruple 40mm mount and no less than 72 20mm guns in 23 twin and 26 single mounts. She then spent 1944 and the first part of 1945 bombarding Japanese positions in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and supported airstrikes with her huge anti-aircraft battery, proving effective at keeping away the torpedo and dive bombers that had doomed the repulse. She was recalled in March 1945 in case the remaining German capital ships made a final attack, which ended up not happening, and she survived the war as a useful fast battleship and a far cry from her original form. It's interesting to compare the Renown and the Japanese Congo class as they were built and as they were finally fitted. The ship would be decommissioned and scrapped in 1948. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, leave a comment below, and we will see about fitting it into the scheduled list.